lab number 261. In this lab, we'll proceed with deployment of our mobile application to a Bluemix-based mobile first platform server, uh, version 8.0. So uh, basically, we will start uh, with opening browser and navigating to Bluemix console. So you need to log in inside. And basically once you've done that, uh, you should already have the mobile first uh, platform service and the instance of mobile uh, foundation containers. So this is the container group uh, that you already did in lab number 66. So uh, for now, what we need to do is to open the mobile foundation service. Verify that status is running uh, and then basically we can open the console if you don't remember the password So you can check it here. So yours uh, will be different from mine Anyway, so we can manage the console of our mobile first platform instance Here we go and uh, basically here uh, we can start moving our uh, application that was deployed on the local server together with adapters uh, here. So there are several options how to do that. Uh, so uh, one of the options is actually to perform deployment right from the console. For example, for adapters, we can click on deploy adapter and then uh, to uh, open the adapter folder and just deploy adapter from the local machine. For example, for user login, we can open the target folder and then navigate to dot adapter file, click open and it will be uploaded and deployed. So as you can see, yep, it is deployed. So actually the same way uh, you can deploy other adapters. Um, you just go into the folder, for example, messenger adapter, go into target, uh, selecting the adapter and clicking open to proceed with upload and deploy. Other option to deploy is from command line interface. So uh, for that, we can navigate to our dev folder, then workspaces HM, and uh, from there, for example, to cloud and to doctor. So here, first of all, we'll need to add uh, a new server that we will be going to deploy to. So that can be done using the command mfp dev server add. And basically what we need to do is to provide the name of the server, let's call it Bluemix. Uh, then the fully qualified URL, uh, meaning you need to provide uh, the host and the port. So in our case, it's looking like this. Uh, the port is 80 by default, uh, just like that. Then uh, the login admin is the login, then uh, you need to provide your password. In my case, I provide in uh, mine. And so you can specify whether you want to save this password or um, enter it in each time you will be doing some actions with that server. I will save this. Uh, contact rules for services by default is the same. And if admin, we can leave it as is. Timeout is 30 seconds, it's fine. And I don't want to make this server default. I still will have default localhost. It looks like I missed something when entering the password. Let me try again. Yeah, so basically at the end, you should see the same as I, uh, like the server profile, Bluemix added successfully. So now we can try to do the following, mfpdev, adapter, uh, deploy, and then provide the server name. In our case, it's Bluemix. As you can see, it's actually performing deploy to Bluemix server of adapter uh, and now we can just refresh the page and we should be able to see that adapter also here. Yep, so as you can see the cloud and adapter is also available right here. So uh, let's deploy what is left. Now uh, we should go to a Google API adapter and deploy it also. So mfpdev adapter uh, 
Kitloy, and then Bluemix. That's it, so we deployed our adapter. Uh, and one more thing that we need to do is actually to work with our application. So let's first of all navigate inside it. So hybrid messenger. So for the application, as you remember from early labs, it's not a app deploy, it's MFP dev app register command. And we also need to say that it will be Bluemix. Just like that. Now uh, we can do Cordova Prepare Android, like it said. Just like that. Uh, we can also uh, try to pull and push the changes to see if that will work. So that can be achieved with MFP dev uh, app pull. Of course, Bluemix. Yep, and push should also work. Exactly. So what has happened just now is actually if we will open the Visual Studio, you will be able to see that in config XML now we have a reference to the Bluemix server instead of local one. So right here, before that it was localhost, now it's the proper URL to the Bluemix based uh, server. So uh, before uh, we will actually make the application um, uh, running on device, uh, let's also prepare two more things. So first one uh, will be a splash screen and second one will be an icon. And uh, that can be uh, prepared using the pure Ionic stuff. So uh, we basically need to do the following. First, open the lab uh, 261 files. You can find the link in the description to this lab and copy icon and uh, splash screen files. And then you need basically to open uh, dev workspaces, then the name of the folder. You need to create a new folder called resources if it doesn't exist. In my case, it already exists. And here, uh, what ne we need to do is we can actually remove all of that that is down there and pass our two files to this resources folder. And just like that. So now we can go uh, back to our terminal and type Ionic resources. And basically what it will do, it will take those uh, files, upload to Ionic servers, and in the back uh, it will generate and deliver uh, back to us uh, the proper size of splash screens and the proper size of icons also. And if, at final step it will update the config XML file so we will here have all the proper URLs to icons and uh, basically the splash screens. So th that's all. Uh, now we can actually do final two steps. Uh, first one will be to launch uh, Cordova uh, built Android. If If we will launch a build before, uh, then actually when we will uh, run something like Cordova emulate, it will happen much faster than if builds uh, will be happening uh, during on, only during the emulation process. Uh, and after the build will be complete, as you can see, it was quite fast. Uh, we can open uh, emulator and after it will be launched, uh, just launch our application on it. So uh, while our emulator is launching, uh, we don't need to forget about one more thing that needs to be done. So uh, let's navigate to our application uh, to security tab and uh, do the mapping because, I mean, you need to remember that this is the totally different servers and we need to do the mapping on our scopes once again. So restricted data should be mapped to user login check. And then we should also have uh, push mobile client scope mapped to nothing. We don't have any security here. And uh, we also need to provide the settings for push, the server API key and the sender. 
You can get it from previous console or from uh, Google API console. So I will pass it from Google API console. And just like that, uh, save those. And we also need to, and we also need to define tag. So let's call it messenger. Like it was before. And that's all. So now our device should be already started. Yep. So now uh, let's launch the application on it. Cordova, emulate, Android. Okay, so application is starting. Okay, it looks like application loaded. Uh, let's take a look on our inspect devices to see if there are no issues. Okay, so uh, we managed to subscribe for a push. Uh, we managed to in a JSON store. We got the adapter responses. Seems like everything is fine. Uh, let's check the news tab. Yep, uh, we have a response. Uh, so rating should also work. Let's take a look. Okay, timeout exceeded. I was talking too much. Uh, let me try to log in again. Yep, so rating is also working. Uh, no issues with that. So uh, basically, it looks like our application is performing just as we expected, uh, which is really great. So basically, uh, now we can exit the application. And basically, uh, we can also check that icon is there. Yeah, icon has changed. Uh, so basically, that's, that's all. Uh, we completed our hybrid messenger application developments, and uh, we also finished our lab number 261. Thank you for staying with us.